Greetings, I'm Shad, and recently I've been enjoying a wonderful discussion with many commenters and viewers of my video uh, regarding shields and their use on horseback, specifically the kite shield. Now, with the discussion, certain things have come up that I feel are quite important to mention, and so this video is shield use on horseback. Now, this video isn't going to be a comprehensive video on shield use on horseback simply because I am not an expert, all right? I'm an enthusiast with uh, an enthusiast's knowledge and I study things the best I can to try and learn um, about things that I'm interested in. But learning is a lifelong process and uh, I continue to learn things that I didn't know beforehand and when I do, I will share them with you. Now, I have ridden um, horses, but I don't know how to ride. <laughs> and if anyone really has ridden a horse and only done it very, you know, if you, only a couple of times, uh, you probably don't know how to ride a horse either. It takes a lot of practice and you need to learn a lot of skills to do it. But at least my limited experience has given me some insight as to uh, uh, what needs to happen riding a horse. But of course, I'm not drawing any of my conclusions from my own experience. I've done a, a lot of study um, uh, and research to try and find out some definitive answers about uh, these topics. Now, contrary to what this probably looks like, I'm not trying to insinuate anything here, all right? It's a horse, you dirty people, all right? This is... It's a horse. And clearly, as uh, evidence, I have no problem making myself look like a complete idiot for the sake of truth! <laughs> I'm so alone. <laughs> In the wonderful discussions I've been having with my viewers regarding uh, shield use on horseback, some really good points have been raised that I want to share with you. Now remember that one of the bigger issues we've been talking about... <laughs> Gotta kind of be careful. Don't want anyone, you know, standing here. So... <laughs> oh dear, this isn't gonna go. <laughs> this isn't gonna go well. All right, so one of the issues we'll be talking about is that um, a kite shield will be it'll be very difficult to get a kite shield from your left side to your right side, and that with a smaller shield it's much easier to do so, like so. Now I can protect myself so on and so forth. And I responded thinking that the Kai Shield is still a decent shield to use on horseback. Um, and some excellent points have been raised uh, that has given me additional thoughts on the subject. Now, it's not too distracting, is it? <laughs> so, one of the points that uh, people have raised uh, is uh, that uh, a kite shield is still very vulnerable to arrow fire on your right side. And that when arrow fire is coming down, um, you can't get it to this side to defend yourself. Now, first kind of point is that the kite shield actually can get on this side. It's just more difficult. So case in point. Now, perhaps maybe the horse's head will be, I don't know, maybe a bit higher or anything, but you can kind of see how you would just raise it, lift it over and Voila! You're on that side, you're fully defended, you can ride or whatever, and you can get it back. And so, the kite shield can get on the right side, and look, if you want to do it fast, you just be like, voila! Oh, yeah! So, it can be done. But there's a very interesting point that renders the whole discussion of left side, right side completely mute, and I've only really realised it recently. Indeed, only two commenters have even brought this up. So, Will Nonya and Britton Cook, I salute you. Well done. And so I completely overlooked this fact, and only when I was thinking about um, the issue of the importance of using the reins on a horse did this come to my mind. And it's simply this. If you were to take your shield and put it on that side, you would have to let go of the reins of the horse. Now this led me on an epic quest. Hi ho! And that was to discover 
It's not distracting, is it? Well, look, this is actually a lot harder to set up than uh, it probably looks like. Um, stuffing around with the coat and the thing and my mic and stuff, and so I'm, actually, I'm not taking it off. I've committed to it. I'm, I'm, I'm on this thing for the entire video. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly this thing is distracting me more than it's distracting you. Anyway, what I try to discover is that is that a problem letting go of the reins to bring the shield over to this side? Because we do know that riding without reins is a thing. Indeed, I, you know, I looked this up, I did research, and I checked it out. Yeah, of course you can ride without reins, but... Da, 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 da. Is one more effective than the other? And I couldn't find anything definitive on the subject if there are drawbacks to riding without reins or with, but I did come across um, certain, I, I certainly got an impression about the one or the other. And so though I didn't find anything definitive, I did get an impression of uh, just what, you know, riders who actually know what they're doing and talking about um, when they refer to not using reins and using reins. And one of the uh, um, things that I, I have discovered um, uh, from the comments that you know I've looked up is that um, riding without reins, it, it seems to be very recommended, um, not as a, a thing to use because it's better, but because it, it actually improves riding with reins. It helps with your posture on the horse and it also trains you from uh, um, it takes away the misuse of reins because you don't want to pull back on horses. There's, there's a lot of interesting facts about the use of reins on horses. And it seems that teaching yourself to ride without reins helps you overcome a lot of the incorrect ways to use reins and also it just improves riding in general. And the other thing that I've gathered from my trolling of the internet is that riding without reins can be, uh, you can do most of the same things as riding with reins. You can get the horse to stop, you can get it to charge, you can get it to turn, but it takes a little longer, it seems, than using reins to convey you know, directions to your horse. Now that is very significant when you try and um, put that, you know, context into a battlefield because in a battlefield, you see something and your life is on the line, so you need to react quickly. And so in that situation, I think, yeah, you're definitely going to be wanting to use reins if that helps assist you to communicate messages to your horse faster. But of course, you know, if you're using a bow and arrow on horseback, well, of course you're not going to be using reins because you need both your arms here. But even in the examples that I've seen, I've kind of notice that they still use reins. They'll ride up and maybe their, their arrow, you know, the, sorry, the bow's in the sand, they're holding the reins, and then they get into a charge along wherever their target is. They'll let go, pull, you know, draw, fire, and once they get, then they will might grab the reins again and uh, do it. So it seems like using reins um, uh, seems to be preferable over not using reins from what I have gathered so far, please let me know if I'm wrong. But of course you can let go of the reins for certain things that you need your hands for. Now, again, when you're in a thick battle and stuff, I feel letting go of the reins, probably not your best move, especially because you want to convey messages very quickly and move around and do what you need to do very quickly when you're in the fray of a battle. But of course, if it's a bit more controlled, like you're going in for a charge, you know you're gonna charge and then you're gonna be pulling out, you could probably do that without reins fairly easily. Now, I just want to say that everything I'm sharing here are assumptions. I mean, the exact art of the knighted mounted combat has mostly been lost. We can only piece together things through logical assumption and stuff. So please be aware of that, all right? Um, these aren't definitive conclusions Conclusions. These are just my thoughts on how uh, um, mounted combat with shields could have been done. Now in regards to riding a horse and use of reins, I have read that there are two types of ways to use reins. One is called neck reining and one is called plow reining. Now plow reining, as I have learned, again correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you know, I have looked up this from reputable sources, uh, I, I believe. But plow reining, you hold the reins like this, kind of like driving a plow, and it uses two hands. You can't really do that um, as a knight because you need your weapon and you have your shield. And so again, they would use uh, neck reining is the method that we would assume knights used on horseback. Now, interesting, already, it's, it's a little tricky even with a shield, but I'm not practiced at it. But how neck craning works is um, 
you get the side, you have your reins and you pull it to one side. So one rein is hanging down, not touching the horse and the other rein will press against the side of the neck of the horse and that tells the horse that you want to turn this way and the same vice versa. Can be done, it's a bit more difficult and I'm using the heater shield and the heater shield I feel is optimized for this type of riding because not much shield is getting in the way and then there you go, and the horse will turn. Now remember, with the understanding of how the reins are used, in a thick, heavy, you know, if you're in combat and you're charging whatever, or if any case comes up where you need to defend this side, I don't think it's a good idea to let go of the reins and bring your shield up, because if you're holding onto the reins when you're doing that, you'd be telling your horse to turn. But that actually might be the answer, because instead of letting go of the reins, bringing the shield onto this side, I feel probably that the, what they would have really done, and I think this is just simple logic, is they would have turned the horse to that side. And so instead of maneuvering the shield onto that side, you just maneuver the whole horse. And, you know, again, it probably would take a little bit longer, and I, I do freely admit that um, that small split second difference could be the difference between life and death. But I feel with how things are done, or even if, say, you raised your shield just like that on the other side, you would again be telling the horse to move in the same motion, and then you just bring the shield back to where it's supposed to go. So the question is, can these things be done, or how do how does you know, manipulating the reins work with different types of shields. Now, honestly, this is gonna be a bit more tricky with my kite shield because uh, I've built it as a center grip and you'd want it as a strapped. And if this was truly strapped, my hand would be about here, but it's gonna kind of fall off. Well, I'm just pulling this together from random pieces, so I'll try and strap it to my arm with a belt. This isn't working. So I'm gonna have to hold it like this, so bear with me. Okay, so, kite shield holding the reins. Can you see that? Holding the reins with how, if your arm was strapped. Now, it, it's tricky, granted, it is tricky, but I feel you can neck crane with a, um, with a kite shield still, okay? And remember, mine is a, is a, it's on the larger end of the scale in regards to kite shields, and so, um, this one I built to uh, serve much better on foot than on horseback. So perhaps the more narrow kind of kite shields, even the ones that maybe are yeah more narrow, de definitely, uh, would be much easier to ride a horse, um, use while riding a horse. But I think I, can, I could get away with it. And I mean, I can certainly bring it onto that side if needs be. But the answer is, of course, why would you ever do that? Because you would have to let go of the reins. Now granted, in an emergency, you probably would, but then, in a big battle, where, and especially if you've ever ridden fast on a horse getting can when it starts to canter or even gallop, and I've done that, you you're bouncing up and down, and it's a, it can be a rough ride. And so I wonder, I added with the uh, chaotic nature of battle, um, how easy it would be to how easy it would be to grab those reins back once you drop them. If I was doing it, I wouldn't want to let go of them, honestly. Now, while I have my horse with me, I'm going to try and to demonstrate a point that I've made many times regarding strapped shields versus center grip in regards to riding on horseback and holding reins. Now, again, this point is going to be accentuated quite a bit because my round shield is so blasted big. It's a, it's a big round shield. They did come in that size, don't get me wrong. Okay, so it's still a standard size. It's just on the bigger end of the spectrum. And this would be far easier with a smaller round shield but you're holding it here you're holding the reins I mean can, can you can you see the difficulty I'm, I'm having here like I, 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 and I so I need to raise it really high to even get it over so maybe I could neck rein but I'd have to be holding my shield way up here get it onto that side get onto there um, and uh, and trying to hold the reins centered at rest, I, I can't really do that without bringing the shield all the way over to obstruct my vision. Uh, it, it, this shield is extending so much past my fist that it's just hitting the neck of the horse. Now, with these things in mind, I think this is quite important to uh, remember that bringing the shield onto your right side from the beginning, it, if you want to keep hold of your reins, 
you would actually never do it in the first place. So that actually removes the entire problem of, the, of bringing the kite shield onto that side or not, because if you're using a smaller shield or heater shield, it would be staying on that side anyway if you want to keep a hold of your reins. And remember, I feel there's advantage in that because you can communicate mess you know, messages, directions to the horse far quicker and the horse is more responsive to rein directions than without. Okay, just quickly some additional points regarding uh, um, uh, horse type of combat in the medieval period. Again, thoughts and assumptions all the way that are very subjective based on how I view things, okay? But if you appreciate my opinions or you uh, get, I, you know, you find them insightful in some way, I'm glad you're here watching and I hope they're helpful. Okay, so now I feel with uh, this in mind, with uh, um, understanding uh, that the reins of the horse are important and stuff like that, this kind of takes out the issue of left side, right side in regards to using a shield on horseback. So then I feel if that was the big advantage of smaller shields on horseback or round ones um, to get onto that side, and now you wouldn't really do that it, in, in my current understanding, okay, in regards to keeping your hands on the reins of the horse, um, that means the advantage you get out of them being smaller is kind of redundant now. And so again, I think, well, why not the kite shield? Because you can still control the reins of the horse. And something that I would neglected to point out as well is that perhaps this is what the whole point of the, uh, I can't really do it, but the um, uh, diagonal straps are for because in when you're trying to hold on the reins of the horse, look at what angle the shield is pushed at. And so, again, it was tricky. I, and remember, I showed you it was tricky getting this, you know, to uh, hold the reins because it was so big and I said perhaps it might have been, you know, more narrow would be easier. But again, it would be even easier on top of that if the straps were diagonal. Because, look, the shield, the bottom of the shield that's getting in the way is now pushed out of the way of the horse's neck far more. So perhaps that's why they had the diagonal straps on clay shields. And so I guess if I was um, uh, going on a horse, uh, using a horse or riding it, and I had the options of which shield to pick, my, for myself, my, my current um, choice, I think I would still pick the kite shield uh, because well, it protects more of your body. Now, granted, what's the point of protecting your own leg when the horse's legs are just as open? Well, I feel the kind of answer to that is most of the attacks that you would need to worry about when on horseback are not really close melee attacks. Um, if you're, if you're, you know, you want to use horses uh, more efficiently, in my opinion, you would be using, you know, lance strikes, javelin strikes, and this applies in rank by rank combat, skirmishes as well, and all the other types of ways that horses can be employed, is that they're going to be on the move. They're like, if you're on a horse, one of the I think it would be quite dumb to just stand still and let people come in and attack you, no matter where, where you're going. And so, really, you hopefully you would never get close enough for anyone to attack your leg or the horse's leg. And so that means the main things that you need to worry about are arrow fire, okay, and other horses, other cavalry that can come and attack you. Because if you're on a horse, and I'm not on mine anymore, farewell, but if you're on a horse and you've got the lance, you're going to be having a decent amount of distance between you and the person that you want to come in and just bang, sniper, and then ride off. And so in regards to arrow fire, yeah, I think a kite shield is far more effective than other shields to protect yourself against because it's bigger. Bigger shield, better to protect yourself from arrows. If the arrows are coming in from the other side, well remember, you'll probably raise it, and even by raising it, you'd already be directing your horse to turn, and then you'd just bring it to where it's supposed to sit naturally, and you're still fairly well protected. Lance strikes from that side? Yeah, that, that would be difficult. I mean, getting the, you know, like, the shield onto that side, you couldn't really do if you're, you know, I guess you could let go of the reins in emergency, but I think you're running into the same issue with the kite shield and a smaller shield, but it's true, a smaller shield, you'll get to that side quicker than a kite because you've got to angle it up to get over. And so perhaps smaller shields are far better to defend against lances and javelins on the right side than the kite. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed, and again these are just my own thoughts and assumptions regarding a subject that I am very enthusiastic about. As to the accuracy of the points I'm making here, all I can really say is uh, the only thing I can use to val val validate them is the logic behind the argument themselves. Because the knight horse kind of combat, I mean, 
I haven't found any, uh, you know, definitive things that's, uh, you know, from it that can be cast as credible historical sources to say that this is how knights rode on horseback and this is how horse combat was used. I mean, I even believe, that, uh, I've even read that the uh, horse breeds that were used in the medieval period have gone extinct, so we can't even uh, gain, you know, insights from that, except from, like, I guess, you know, bones and, and such. But we do what we can with what we can learn, and this is what I have done. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching. <laughs> attack! Attack, horsey! Attack! Oh, you're a good horsey, are you? You're a very good horsey. Oh, he's a good horsey. I think I shall name the Frederick. 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 Move, Frederick. Move, Frederick. Frederick. Move. Frederick, move. Yeah. Ah! Ah!